Now um, you are working about another of your, I think, old and fascinating project, Naked Lunch. Mm -hmm. And you are working with the Burroughs, or...? Well, we've been talking about it for maybe five years. I think I met Burroughs five or six years ago, and uh, with Jeremy Thomas, who produced The Last Emperor and uh, a lot of other films. And uh, there's some... I want to do something that has to do with Burroughs and with that book. <coughs> but it's, it's really very difficult. It's really an impossible book to put on the screen. You, so I have to transform it somehow so that it can be on the screen, and I'm not sure yet how to do that. But you are, you are going to do now, or, or not? Is your next movie? Well, only if I can figure out how to do it. I mean, this is always the dangerous thing. I could spend uh, a year writing a screenplay and then at the end say, this is no good. It's possible. Then you have to start with something else from the beginning. You are generally fascinated by Burroughs or is uh, only this one novel? Oh, no. It, with Burroughs, it's everything. I mean, his life as well. Um, a, a very unusual man and really one of the founders of the Beat Generation with Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg. And because of that, one of the foundations of what happened in the 60s, you know, the whole hippie movement and everything, in a, it Burroughs was really at one of the founders of all of that in a strange way. And I find all of that very fascinating. Uh, but uh, I don't yet know how to put that on paper and then on screen. I haven't figured that out yet. I saw um, Videodrome um, many times, and I think is something between, let's say, uh, between Dick uh, and Barrows. Mm. <laughs> well, I think that's fair. I think that's very right. fair to say, yeah. And what do you think of real, real life, uh, real life uh, television? Who is now, I, I mean, uh, um, crime watching uh, uh, shows uh, in the states? I don't know if he's also in Canada. Yeah. It's very strange, isn't it? Uh, it's, uh, an, it, but it's really what I, I think. It's just even more of what I was talking about in Videodrome that. Uh, reality is being replaced by another reality that's a video media television reality which for some people is more real than anything else and it, it is real it, 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 people make political decisions based on media reality um, what's happening in in places like let's say beirut lebanon uh, the media reality is quite different from what the people experience who live there. And yet, for most of the people in the world, what they see on television, what they hear on the radio, what they read in the paper, that is reality. There's, there is no other one. It suddenly becomes two separate realities uh, distanced from each other. It's quite strange. Don't you think that perhaps... Uh, no, that you can think that perhaps uh, the reality is already repla replaced by another reality. I, I don't know, I, I, I'm very fascinated in, in Dead Ringers by the fact that the film is quite um, natural, quite uh, no monsters, you know, some instruments, some little, but <laughs> um, you are um, continu continuously uh, thinking that perhaps all these uh, are, I don't know, um, robots. Uh, it's something in, 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 other, in, in your other movies, that these bodies are going to explode, mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, now, actually, they don't explode, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, that something is uh, forever uh, mutated, that the mutation is already gone. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking to David Cronenberg, Kronen, and I don't know if he's a machine, if he's, uh, who he is, yes, actually. Yes. Well, it, from my side, I think there is another David Cronenberg walking around that many people think is the real one, and maybe he is. <laughs> because people read, they think they know me. You know, of course, I'm, 
this happens to anybody in the in the media, but it's the first time it's happened to me. It's very interesting. People think they know me, they know about my life, uh, and they don't. But they they know about this other one, you know, the media, one, the one in the magazines and on television. So, um, I, th I I believe though that we are, you know, we think that our physical existence is stable, relatively stable, but I think it isn't. I think the body is like a, a hurricane. Uh, it's constantly changing and uh, shifting, and it's only illus an illusion that it's the same day after day after day. Really, it's never the same from one moment to the next. So that's why the, the question of identity becomes even more compelling. We, s we feel that we are someone who continues, who has a history, will have a future. But you can't prove that. <laughs> it's impossible to prove that. And yet we feel it to be true, that it is reality. So I'm very interested in that. And that's one of the themes, of course, of, of Dead Ringers in particular. Two bodies. Is it two bodies? Is it two identities? I'm not sure. Vigil Drone was uh, influenced by your work on on TV, for TV? Not really. And you, in, in this movie you seem very fascinated by the idea of snuff movies, of... of uh... Well, I think uh, that's another false, well, not false, alternate reality. Because I don't think there ever was a snuff movie. Uh, uh, many people have uh, tried to prove it, that there was or is, or, and, and there, no one has ever seen it. I think it's a myth. Uh, but the idea is so fascinating that it might as well be real. You know, it doesn't matter if there ever was a real South American, Colombian snuff movie. But I have uh, my uh, James Woods uh, character say, you know, why, why go to the trouble of actually killing somebody? You can fake it. It's, ch you know, it's cheaper, it's more convincing, and it's less dangerous. Um, but what interested me more was how, f how f the public wanted, I think the public w wanted it to be real. You know, while saying how horrible it was, how terrible, uh, I think they really wanted it to be real. That was, I found that very interesting. Why did they want it so badly to be real? You often find this, you know, that uh, the, the, the strangest and the most horrible things, uh, the most bizarre, the most sexually perverse things, uh, people by spending a lot of energy and saying how bad it is and talking about the implications of it, they, they keep it alive. They, they, want, they want it to be there. It's, it's an interesting thing that I notice. And, uh, I think in this, in the case of snuff movies, I think, uh, I think that was a very spectacular case of that. At, at the end, we saw some uh, snuff movies. Uh, I don't know, the 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 Challenger who exploded in <laughs> TV direct. Also, uh, Reagan being yes. being near ex yes. assassinated. Yeah, I mean, that's a very really a wonderful observation because it's true that it's on the news that you see the real snuff movie. Snuff TV is very popular. Uh, I've seen people commit suicide on TV. I've seen people jumping to their death on TV. And yet no one, no one ever calls it that, you know. They think it must be some strange South American uh, movie with prostitutes being strangled and so on. Um, uh, I'm not sure, I mean, it feels that it's very perverse, and I'm not, but I'm not sure that it is. I'm not sure that it is. Is it, does it distance us from, from uh, a, a reality, or is it another kind of, or is it involving us? You know, when people see the Challenger explode and, and cry in their homes, is that, is that bad or is that a kind of communion that you can only have through some medium like television? I don't know. I really don't know. But it's very powerful though. And it's and it is changing everything.